Hi there, my name is Daniel Ombuhl. Today uh, we will start the breeding process for Megasoma species, especially Megasoma elephas, step by step. So you can uh, see in the list of videos in the playlist later on uh, how we progress in uh, breeding uh, both Megasoma species that are very big, so you have to uh, think about where you get your uh, material uh, to breed them and you will see in these videos how we do it. First step is to prepare a box for the L1 larvae. And let's say it clear for the L1 larvae it means that we put 10 larvae L1 into a 22 liter box like this and then we leave them there in the box for around 6 months. That's the next uh, check and then we go on with checks in 6 months but of course we don't keep them uh, all uh, always in this uh, 22 liter box 10 larvae together but we will separate males and females later and so on so, but first we start with a um, rearing container for the larvae and for that I'm um, I'm making something uh, that you can use for practically all Megasoma and Dynasties uh, larvae and uh, one of the things I I had in mind was what happens in half an year in a rearing box like that. Mostly when uh, larvae start chewing on the material, uh, the material is getting more and more compacted and during this process also not only it's getting compacted but it's getting wetter and wetter a little bit. So how can we manage that the, the substrate uh, is uh, staying a little bit uh, soft and um, well aerated so that's why I do it with, in the first step with this kind of material on the bottom it's a pure beach uh, sawdust with nothing else in there's no glue in there to keep the pellets together it's just pure beach you will find it if you have a look uh, in uh, in fact, that produce um, um, material from timber. This is only beech, so I, I make more parts of it. And then, with this kind of, it's around one kilogram. I mean, the larvae can't eat this. That's for sure, because this is uh, this is a, a wood that is not yet. Uh, eaten up by mushrooms so that will not be um, food for the larvae but what we do here we just cover the bottom of the of the cage with these with these uh, pieces of that uh, beach pellets so, and the idea is that this is kind of the of the bottom of a hollow tree where there is the, the the wood of the tree not yet dead but it's on the way to degrade degrade because likely in half an year this will degrade also and then in that process of degradation it could be edible then for our insects too so that's the bottom uh, of the cage now the second material that we use is uh, flake soil that is also made out of this uh, beach sawdust but it's fermented that's what we see here and it's mixed together with leaves rotten leaves of oak and beech and also it has small parts of, uh, of little branches of trees and things in it so that's um, the second uh, material that we use and we just cover now this we just cover these pellets with that substrate and here you can press it slightly so So well, and yeah, that's it. Second part of it. 
Well, now the third ingredient that is probably the most um, important. It's uh, white rotten wood pieces. Look, I put in some big ones, but that's not a problem for Laurie because they chew it eat up and eat it up all the time. And now one thing you must see if you get it from nature, sometimes you will see something like this here. What is it? Of course it's a larvae and it's a larvae of a, of a stag beetle. It's Dorcus parallelipedus and they often, you will see them often if you have white rotten wood in the garden, you will find them sometimes in, a, in big numbers and of course you cannot always prevent them from going into your uh, wood blocks because they, they go out at night and they find the, the wood that they love. But also you can take them out and breed them separately if you want because if you expose if you expose a larvae like this in nature it will last only some seconds and the larvae will be dead because the ants are coming and other animals and will eat that um, a little larvae so you, hear, you see, this is a little a pellet um, of the lorry. It's completely white because of the white rotten wood. What I do with this one, I just put it in an old kimchi, cover it a little bit with the material. Here, that's it. Old kimchi. And so you can breed Zorkut parallelly pipetus also. You know, in Switzerland they are protected. Uh, species but protect it if I just say oh I don't do anything I just put it outside what happens it just dies you know so uh, protect this means protection if you really want you can keep it in a box like this make it to an, a beautiful adult you can watch how it grows what it eats and in around half a year it will uh, leaf and it will fly around and also here sometimes in your breeding in your breeding places where you have your substrate and so on you will see these animals that's uh, Dorcus parallelipipetus female here so these you will see often here in Europe they are very widespread and you can uh, find them in big amounts around white rotten uh, wood block. Also sometimes they crawl into the substrate of the beetle that you are breeding and you will find them there with the other uh, uh, animals together. So now I have to write what is in there so I know it later. That's also something that happens often that you see larvae um, I write Dorcus P fifth of August 14. This one you don't have to keep in uh, warm places. Dorcus parallelipipedus lives in uh, branches over the ground so they also freeze in the winter to temperatures of around 20 below zero and it doesn't harm them because they have a special uh, fluid in their uh, uh, body uh, to prevent them from freezing. So but let's go back to the Megasoma elephant breeding container. So if I have these pieces of beautiful white rotten uh, wood, I prepare them myself. If you want to see, you can go back in my in my channel and see where I describe how you make uh, these white rotten wood pieces yourself. Then I cover uh, the bottom of this uh, box with some of the big pieces of that material because I have a lot of them I don't um, I can put a lot of them in that uh, third stage and now here the fifth stage is again we cover the whole material with the mixture of flake soil and leaves so 
I move it and this way so that it can reach all the place in the substrate. Well, so that's the main uh, setup of the rearing box for Megasomo. On the bottom you have this sawdust with no mycelium, no mushroom in there, then you have covered it with uh, compressed flake soil, then you cover it with white rotten wood, then you fill it up with this uh, mixture of flake soil and then of course what we need the lorry, yes we need the lorry of uh, the beetle this I have here now I think I, I will put 10 lorry into this uh, breeding or rearing container and then uh, we will see whether we already have 10 to start this uh, breeding box LFOS it 21st of June uh, it was an egg so that's about five weeks so it should be an L if it's already out it should be an L1 larvae let's have a look whether we find it here somewhere of course if it's an egg it can also now here it is the larvae this is already a nice big L1 larvae of Megasoma elephos it's you see the small head and the white body, that means it will uh, change to L2 soon. So what we do, I just make a little hole here in the substrate, put the old substrate where it lived in, make a hole, cover it up, that's it. So I put it on top of the substrate, why? Because then they can dig down and step by step eat up the material that they like. So now prepare some other holes where I can put the other lorry so that should be 10 if they are all filled next box same thing was an egg five weeks ago let's see whether we find something in here too always keep, yeah that you already already see here the little frass pallets of the larvae so that is for sure a larvae so here she is also I make a little hole, put in of the old substrate, larvae, give it back the larvae, cover it with the old material. So that's it. So, so we go step by step. Next one, same thing. Do we see something here? Uh, yeah, I don't see any fresh pellets. So let's see whether it already is out or whether this egg didn't hatch. It can happen that's it would be unusual that all really all of the eggs hatch so this didn't hatch. We go to the next one. And that's what I do now. I just put all ten larvae on the top. This was a L2 larvae or Oh yeah, here. No, that's not true. It's an L1. It's an L1. Actually, this is another L1 here. So, now we have the one here. One here. We already have four of them. And that's what we do, step by step. This here, in this cage, 20s of July there were six eggs so what do I do? Twenty. I have a look from outside so do I see something? Yes if I look here or here are the channels of the eggs down here but you don't see any egg in there anymore so what we can do is uh, just wait until they are a little bit bigger because that's only uh, two weeks now I would say let's have a look first to the other boxes and then we decide now this 21st uh, of June there was 
there is also egg in here. Now it's a big hole. You see here uh, that must be that must be already a larvae. Let's see where it is. Yeah, here. It's a L1. Oh, it's still an L1. Also this. Now this is number five. Number five. And here are the other five holes that I put in. So I will see whether we have enough glory to fill this up. This is another same egg. You know that um, Megasoma elephas, they like to live in groups. Some people say they get lonely if they are alone. And that can be because it's known that larvae, they can communicate with each other, but not with uh, speaking like we do. But this is something else. This is a Hercules. But with vibrations in the substrate. So they have the little hairs on the body to take up vibrations of the substrate. And when they shake the larvae or they stridulate, uh, they can uh, make some noise in the substrate and the waves of the noise go through the substrate and they can pick it up with the hair on the body. So that's how larvae, even if they don't see each other in the substrate, they can know whether uh, another larvae is close to them or not. So this seems to be, uh, this is a beautiful big L1 of Elephas also. Just put it in here. Number six. There are two L1 larvae from two weeks ago. Should be in here. Ooh, this is a very small one looking out of the substrate here. You see it? Or is it, can we see it here? Here. This is the larvae here looking out of the substrate. It, was on, it just came on top of the substrate to have a look what happened. Just so now what do we do? Let's have a look whether we see the others too. Uh, here, the, this very small one I just leave in here. And this one is much, much bigger. I put down here, so it's seven. I have two more. Uh, L1. Two L1 should be in here. Let's see whether we find them. Yeah, here's one. Here's one. L1. Larry and the other. Where is it? Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, everything. No larvae died. Uh, only one egg didn't touch. That's a nice thing. So, that's it. Don't, don't press it too much, but you can press it uh, slightly so they feel comfortable because mostly the eggs are laid in compressed uh, substrate. This is it. We have a cover, a lid, of course, with holes in it to, uh, to cover the whole thing. And that's about it. We check it first time in exactly half an year. And we put this box into a room where it's between 24 and 25 uh, degrees Celsius. So let's see what happens in half an year. Thanks for watching.